Hey, while you in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like and subscribe. Without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started. The title of today's class is Loose Lips sink ships from going to gossiping uh murmuring and tail bearing which is the same thing as uh, being a gossip we're gonna start it out with leviticus chapter 19 and verse 16. leviticus chapter 19 and verse 16. the book of leviticus chapter 19 verse 16. thou shalt not go up and down as a tail bearer among the people Neither shall thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. So it says, we should, none, none of the Israelites, none of us should go up and down as a tail bearer. Uh, let's pull up that definition of tail bearer so we can get a clear understanding what it means to be a tail bearer. Clear understanding. Pull up that definition. It's the, I put them in order, so it should be the first, the first post. Tailbearer, one that spreads gossip or rumors. So it says one that spreads gossip or rumors. Pull up the definition of gossip because a tailbearer is pretty much, it's just another word for gossip. Pull up the definition. And this definition, before we pull up that next definition, pull up the um the uh the very first post so we see what dictionary this is coming out of. Not that one, the, the one the American dictionary or the English language. I got it. The American Dictionary of the English Language. So this next definition, we're pulling it up out of this Bible. A few other definitions, the ones that you see on the screen that's going to come up that don't have a... a um, like a little logo on it, they coming out of this uh, dictionary. Pull up the definition of gossip. Just read the highlights. Gossip, one who runs from house to house, tattling and telling news, an idle tattler. In other words, a person who goes around telling other people's business, telling people business that it says an idle tattler, meaning you're just telling it to tell it. You ain't trying to get no solution to issues. You ain't trying to get no solution to problems. You just going around listening to people business and going and telling people business. And the Bible tells us in Leviticus 19, 16, it says, Thou shalt not go down, go up and down as a talebearer among thy people. Read the next part. To prat, to chat, to talk much. Israel is very bad at running their mouth when it's not necessary. So that's something that we, we have to learn is to talk much. Read. Pull it up. It's cut off at the bottom. A prating, a running about to collect tails and tattle. It says a, a prating, a running about to collect tails and tattle. So you're only talking to a brother or sister just to get their information, get their business so that you can go and tell it. That's not a spirit we're supposed to roll in as Israel. 
as Israel, as repented Israelites, what you hear, you're not supposed to go and tell everybody business. If you hear something that's, that's sin or that's bad, you're supposed to come to the leadership so that the situation can be resolved, so a solution can be provided, or to get counsel to be able to help the brother or sister to better their situation. You shouldn't just be going and telling any just any average Joe Blow that came in a congregation, so you just spreading everybody news. You're destroying a person's uh, name, destroying a person's reputation. That's evil. That's what the scriptures say. Read that again in Leviticus 19. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 16. Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people. Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. So the law is, the law in Leviticus 19 lets us know we're not supposed to be the one that's going around telling everybody business throughout the congregation. The only time you should be repeating what somebody told you is if you're trying to get counsel to provide them with a solution. If you're telling leadership about a sin that's going on and you're trying to get a solution to a problem. Outside of that, you out the spirit because you're going and telling people business to somebody that can't solve a problem that they may have. That's not a spirit that we're supposed to roll in. And that last part, it says, neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor, right? That's what it says? Yes, sir. Go to Matthew chapter 26, just to give, that's off the title, off the topic, but we're going to deal with it. Matthew chapter 26 and verse 59. <clears throat> this is what it means to stand against the blood of your neighbor. Yeah, 26 and 59. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 59. Now the chief priests and the elders and all the council sought false witness against Jesus to put him to death, uh -huh. but found none. Yea, though many false witnesses came, yet found they none. At the last came two false witnesses and said, this fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God. And to build it in three days. And the high priest arose. So we're not going to read all the way through. But to stand against the blood of thy neighbor is going into you, you standing against your brother being put to death for a lie. You're standing against the blood of your neighbor off a of false witness to get him to cause him to be put to death. That's what happened to Christ. The Pharisees and Sadducees, the chief priests, stood against the blood of Jesus Christ. That's what that's going into. So from there, go to Sirach chapter 19 and verse 5. Sirach book, chapter 19 and verse 5. The book of Sirach chapter 19, verse 5. Whoso take a pleasure in wickedness shall be condemned, but he that resisteth pleasure crowneth his life. So none of us, as we are repenting, we're not supposed to take pleasure in wickedness. We see the videos. We see the various things that's going on on social media. We seeing you, you got the videos of our sisters twerking and doing all this evil. We not supposed. We not. If you watch that type of stuff, you're taking pleasure in wickedness. You watching the um, I don't even know a lot of these housewives. These what the housewives? I don't even know if that stuff current. I don't know the current the reality TV shows where they just be on there gossiping. Housewives of Atlanta, and you take pleasure. You gotta, you gotta, uh, you make sure that you at home when it come on. You miss, you don't miss no episodes. We're not supposed to be taking pleasure in those things. Not saying that you can't watch no movies. Not saying that you can't watch no um, TV. But if you, if your desire is 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 fully set on watching those type of shows, what you think that's doing to your spirit? It's not, ed it's not edifying. Those that take pleasure in wickedness, it says you take pleasure and read it again. Whoso take a pleasure in wickedness shall be condemned. We're not supposed to entertain no level of wickedness. In this case, we're talking about gossip. Some a sister, brother come to you talking about another person's life. Hey, uh, no Bishop can now always bring it out. Br bring the person they talking to. Hey, come over here. Say what you said. Those are the things you gotta do. You gotta shut it down at the, right there. You got to shut it down because if they, if you allow them to, if you allow them for one, they come to you, they testing your spirit. They testing you to see if you're going to allow them to talk or if you're going to shut them down. That's the, that's what the scriptures say when the, uh, in, um, I think it's in Timothy where it said those that are approved, somebody going to come to you gossiping and it's up to you to decide. It's up to you to, okay, am I going to stop this gossip 
or am I going to listen to it and feed into it? Because if you feed into it, they snatched you. Next thing you know, you're going to be walking around gossiping, telling everybody business. Read on. Whoso take a pleasure in wickedness shall be condemned. But he that resisteth pleasures crowneth his life. Meaning you resist the pleasures of sin. You crown your life. Why? Because when you keep the commandments of God, you get eternal life. Read on. Verse 6. He that can rule his tongue shall live without strife. So we have to, as Israel, we have to discipline our tongue. Israel is, Israel love drama. That's why when you go on YouTube, the, the, the camp videos that get the most views is the ones that got the, the, the title that let you know that it was a scoffer or it was somebody uh, resisting the camp. Israel love drama. And, and one day you have a million views. Because Israel loves drama. But when it's a, 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 a camp video where it's actually edification going out, somebody being taught the laws, it got like 200 views. That's because Israel loves drama. We can't, we, can't, we can't roll like that. Yeah, you want the entertainment, you want the excitement, but we can't roll like that. We want to we wanna have the things that actually feed our spirit and benefit our spirit and allow us to grow. Read on. And he but it that says, he that can rule his tongue shall live without strife. If you can rule your tongue, if you can hear something, hear hear your hear something about your your brother, your sister tell you something, if you can hear it, but you can rule your tongue not to go and repeat it with somebody else, it says you shall live without strife. Because if you a person that's just going and telling everybody business, everybody business, you're gonna be hated. Nobody's gonna be around wanna be around you. Read. And he that hateth babbling shall have less evil because a babbler ain't nothing all they do is cause trouble that's why a lot of the drama and the hatred and the murders go on in the various cities in chicago in the cities that's why hatred goes on around us because a rumor spread and the next thing you know somebody getting shot up off of a rumor because that's a hatred spirit you destroy souls when you roll in the spirit of gossip and murmuring read verse seven Rehearse not unto another that which is told unto thee. So the Bible tells us, rehearse, don't repeat something that your brother or sister told you. Or if you overheard a conversation that somebody was talking about, you're not supposed to go and repeat that. If somebody's confide, confiding in you with their personal, they personal um, lives, their personal things, they're trying to confide in you to get counsel to get better, and you go and bash them or you go and tell what they what they may be struggling with to somebody else that's not going to be able to provide a solution. The next thing you know, the whole congregation knows about this person's uh, business because you couldn't keep your mouth shut. That's not a spirit we're supposed to roll in. So it's rehearsed not unto another that which is told unto thee, read. And thou shalt fare never the worst. I Meaning ain't no evil going to come on you. Because if you're going around telling everybody business, that's an evil spirit. The scriptures let us know in Galatians, it says, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man reap, that shall he sow. So you going around telling everybody business, trying to destroy people's name, that, that, that lot that you putting out there is going to come right back on you. It's going to come right back on your own head. So you have, we, have to, we have to know how to rule our own tongue. Read. Verse 8. Whether it be to friend or foe, talk not of other men's lives it says don't talk of other men's lives read and if thou canst without offense reveal them not and it says if thou canst without offense meaning the only time that you should be saying talking about somebody else's business when you're trying to go get counsel to get them a solution to improve their situation not just randomly just going telling anybody about somebody's business and it says you can't re if you can't reveal it without offense meaning if you tell you just uh, openly and being a loose lip, just telling everybody business, you're causing an offense because you're telling somebody business that everybody shouldn't know. Read. Verse 9. For he heard and observed thee, and when time cometh, he will hate thee. So some, some brothers and sisters, they just hear just to hear your information, just to hear what you got. Believe it or not, it's spies amongst the congregation. They just here to hear what's going on so they can go and tell. They go and go and tell whoever they whoever sent them or just tell anybody to try to defame you, try to bring your name down, try to bring you down, your reputation. Read. Verse 10. If thou has heard a word, let it die with thee and be, and be bold. It will not burst thee. 
And if you struggle with that spirit, this is what you got to listen to. Read that again. If thou has heard a word. Somebody came and told you their personal business. Let it die with thee. It says, let it die with you, meaning it's as if you never heard it. Read. And be bold. It will not burst and thee. And it says, be bold. Be strong. It's not going to burst you. Your, your heart, your, your mouth going to be itching to say what you heard. But it says, be bold, meaning be strong in the spirit and don't go and reveal that to somebody else. Without the purpose of, of getting a solution, if it's an issue, if you ain't able to go get no, if you're not going to get a solution, let it die with you. Don't go tell nobody business. Uh, read on. Verse 11. A fool travaileth with a word as a woman in labor of a child. It says a fool traveleth with a word as a woman in labor. When a woman is in labor, you know that that baby coming. That baby is going to come out. So the same thing with a fool. You a fool if somebody tell you something, you get a piece of information, and you just travel, and you're ready to go and deliver. Because a fool, that's, like, that's what it is. They hear something, and they're going to deliver it like, just like a woman in travail, a woman that's giving birth to a child. That's not a spirit we're supposed to roll in as Israel. We have to make sure that we learn how to rule our spirit and our tongue so that we're not just going and randomly telling everybody's business that shouldn't be known amongst the congregation. Um, read. Verse 12. As an arrow that sticketh in a man's thigh, so is a word within a fool's belly. So it's as an arrow that sticketh in a man's thigh, so is a word within a fool's belly. When a word within a fool's belly, as an arrow sticketh in a man's thigh, when an arrow go through through the through a man, if you shoot a, if you shoot an arrow and it go through a man's thigh, it goes it, and it goes through a man's thigh. That arrow is gonna go through. Say it again. <laughs> you just gonna go through and you gonna scream. And it says, uh, as a, as an arrow that sticketh in a man's thigh, so is a word within a fool's belly. He's not gonna hold it. He's, everything that you say to him is gonna go. It's gonna come out. He's gonna speak. He's gonna speak it. It's gonna be like, uh, um, what's the word? It's the, th that's not what I'm looking for, but that's good. And it's gonna be an impulsive reaction. It's automatic. It's gonna go in and they're gonna go out. They're gonna go and tell somebody. So that's not the spirit that we. That's not the spirit that we're supposed to roll in as Israel. Get a Proverbs chapter eleven and verse thir thirteen. The book of Proverbs, chapter 11 and verse 13. A talebearer revealeth secrets, but he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. So when you're faithful, if you are a faithful person, you're going to be able to hear a matter and not reveal that secret. But if you're a talebearer or a gossip, you're going to reveal everything that's told to you. You're going to reveal other men's lives. You're going to reveal the secrets of men. That's not, that's not how we're supposed to roll. Uh, get Proverbs 20 and 19. The book of Proverbs, chapter 20 and verse 19. He that goeth about as a talebearer revealeth secrets. Uh -huh. Therefore, meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. So it says, meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. Everybody that's, that appears to be friendly ain't, ain't your friend. Everybody that a friend appears to be friendly and know the scriptures because they can quote, they they not able to hold water. They not able to hold your secrets. Uh, where, is that? Is I think it's somebody being Sirach. Where it say, uh, "Be not hasty." Since Sirach, it's in one of them chapters that I just read. Because the thing is, you can't be. That's why the scriptures say, "Prove a friend." You can't just be quick to tell your business to anybody. That's why you have leadership set up. You got chains a command to go through so you don't just openly just reveal your, your, your secrets to somebody that's not able to help you. Because what you would be doing is you being hasty to credit somebody, and Scripture call that being light-minded. You're going to tell somebody your business, and before you know it, everybody going to know what's going on. Everybody in the congregation going to know what's going on in your life because you, you didn't use wisdom. You didn't use wisdom when it came down to Seeking out counsel, telling the right person your information. Y'all got it? Without the book of Sirach, chapter 19, verse 4. He that is hasty to give credit is light-minded, 
and he that sinneth shall offend against his own soul. So if you if you fresh in the congregation, you come in three to six months, and you just open to talk to anybody, even if you eight months, nine months, you just just because a sister friendly, a brother friendly, they appear to know the scriptures, they seem to have wisdom, and you just readily tell them your business, tell them your information, that says you light-minded. Because that's not a long enough time for you being around to be able to know somebody's spirit, to be able to judge. Because you ain't even really figured out your own spirit yet. How you going to be able to judge if somebody's spirit is right within that, that short, short frame of time? So it says, he that is hasty to give credit, meaning you quick to go and tell your business to somebody. And then before you know it, you hearing about your business from somebody else that you ain't talked to. That shouldn't be. That shouldn't be the case. So it's a, the gossip or you evil. If you going and telling people business, you evil. But if you're telling your business to just some random person that you really don't know, you simple. That's what it means. That's what the Bible means when it says you light-minded. You're simple. You have no understanding. In lamer terms, you stupid. And we're not supposed to be like that. When you, you come in, you build up your spirit so that you're able to discern. If you need counsel on some things, on some personal matters, you come to the leadership. You come to the, the leadership, the sisters that have been around for a long time, the, senior, the more senior sisters. You don't just go to you know, any sister just because she, she smile and say hi and come and greet you on the Sabbath. That's being simple. That's being light-minded. That's not how we're supposed to be. Um, go to um, Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 20. The book of Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 20. I feel like I'm rushing or something. Proverbs chapter 26 and 20. The book of Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 20. Where no wood is. There the fire goeth out. It says where no wood is, the fire goes out. Read. So you know when you when you have wood, if you got for fire going, that wood eventually is gonna burn off. But as the as long as you add wood, that fire gonna keep burning. The fire gonna keep burning. Read. So where there is no tear bear, the strife cease. So a lot of times when there's strife going on within the congregation, there's a tail bearer somewhere. Cause the tail bearer is going telling this sister this telling that sister that now this sister got something against that sister because this sister didn't told us something or this brother didn't told this brother something and now brothers got looking at looking at brothers with an evil eye that's causing strife and division and we're not supposed to have that spirit that's why to say that's why the scriptures say that's why the law says you should not be go as a tail bearer among your people because this, a tail bearer is going to cause strife so if you got that spirit, get counsel. Get counsel and, and tame your, learn how to tame your tongue. You ain't got to speak everything that come to your mind. You ain't got to speak everything that you hear. You have to learn discretion. You have to learn when and where to speak. Speak when it's necessary. Speak in the, in the, in the time when it's necessary and when, is when you hear, you hear somebody personal matter and it may be a bad situation. They may be in a, a a rough situation, a low situation, where they they don't they they may they may be uh, uncomfortable, so to say, to to come to leadership or something. But you hear it. That means you come to the leadership who can actually provide a solution for that person. You don't you don't they confide in you because they trust in you, so you go and get the solution to their problem. Whether you come to leadership, get the answer, and then you go back to them and say, "Hey, well, you can do X, Y, Z." You know, I did. I know you, 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 I know you, you told me I went and got some counsel. I asked the leadership. They said, do this X, Y, Z. Because now you're providing them a solution. So now they can trust in you. But if you just go in and telling somebody, telling everybody, now the person business is all throughout the congregation. You got sisters or brothers looking at this person sideways. That's an evil spirit. You're causing strife. You're causing division amongst the body. And that if you, that, that's, and that's a spirit that's not tolerated. Let's get, uh, um, First Corinthians one and ten, and then First Corinthians one and ten. Let's get that first. The book First Corinthians, chapter one and verse ten. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together 
in the same mind and in the same judgment. So for us to be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment, we have to we have to apply the commandments. The commandments say don't go up and down as a tailbearer among your people. Cuz if you do go if you go around telling everybody business, you're causing division, you're causing strife. And that's creating division. That means that you have to you got to go. Because you're causing strife, you're dividing the body. We trying to come together out of the out of the 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 um the, the ways of the world from the evil that we see on a day to day basis, but yet yeah, yeah, brothers come in here and see the same thing. They ain't gonna want to come. You are gonna run people up out of here. That's a divisive spirit. If you a tail bearer, you a gossip. That's a divisive spirit. Also going into a murmur, murmuring and complaining. That's a divisive spirit. It puts spirits on people and causes them to look look at other brothers and sisters as evil. If you're talking about the leadership, if you go in the bathroom, you're going in the back, and you're talking about, I ain't like leadership did this, they made this decision, they did that, they did this. That's an evil spirit because now you causing brothers, you causing sisters to look at the leadership that they probably don't even know to look at them sideways, look at them, look at them like they don't know what's going on, like they don't know what they're doing. Because if you can't keep your mouth shut, because you're telling things that you should not be telling, you're telling false false things, and you you creating a perception that's not true. You're creating a false impression. And most of the time, because most of the time Israel come in, they a little uh, skeptical. They a little shy. They really don't wanna. They really don't trust just talking to somebody because they've been scorned in Christianity, they've been scorned in Islam, they've been scorned all their life, so then they come in and they hear those things, then you you add to that skepticism, and before you know it, you done destroy the spirit and they going up out of here because of you, because your spirit ain't right, because you ain't dealt with yourself. That's not the spirit that we're supposed to roll in. Pull up a, um, that article, that first article, Five Truly Harmful Effects of Gossip, and we're going to start at uh, Mistrust. Five truly harmful effects of gossip. Go down to number one. Number one, mistrust. Gossip leads to mistrust for everyone involved. If you are a person known for sharing everything you hear, it is likely many will be nervous to share with you. As I was once taught, if they will talk about them to you, they will talk about you to them. So while sharing the latest news may feel good in the moment, the person listening will remember how you lack discretion. Thus, not only will your listener lose trust for you when the person you've talked about learns of your inability to withhold information, you will lose their confidence as well. And what does that do? Like we read in Sirach. Uh, 19, it says, He that can rule his tongue shall live without strife, and he that hateth babbling shall have less evil. You're creating strife by you, by you gossiping and telling everybody business. You're creating strife, even in this, in this aspect where nobody want to be around you. That's strife. You're causing divisions. Even though your spirit ain't right and it's you that's the problem, that's still strife. Read on. Whosoever goeth about slandering reveals secrets. Therefore, do not associate with a simple babbler. Proverbs 2019. That's the uh, watered down version. Because right. I think we just read that. And it says something totally different. Exactly. Number two, the spreading of lies. One reality about gossiping is that lies often weave themselves into it. This is sometimes intentional as the sharer wants to make the story more interesting or defame the person to a greater extent. Oftentimes, lies can be... Hey, hey uh, can y'all can blow that up a little bit? I think my uh, my eyesight diminishing. I can't see that. It's kind of hard. I'm squinting. Yeah, it is. I'm trying to pull up the muscle of too, man. I thought, I thought you had some superhuman glasses <laughs> or so. Because I could barely see that. I was trying to hide it for a second because I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want nobody saying I need glasses. Blow it up. 
I'm 22. I had 2020 vision. Okay, that's good. The spreading of lies. One reality about gossiping is that lies often weave themselves into it. See that? So you go around telling, telling us, because obviously, if you're telling somebody else business to somebody and they don't stop you, that means that that person got a gossiping spirit. So now they're going to hear it. They're going to go tell somebody else. If that person don't stop it, it's going to go to somebody else. And every time it get transferred over to somebody else, it's going to get watered down and stuff going to get added to it. And it's going to turn into a whole different story. So by the time it get back to you, you like, huh? That ain't going on. Uh, yeah, the sisters actually did that in their, sister, in their circle after the uh, Sabbath class. They would tell one sister a thing, and she would tell the next sister. She would tell the next sister. And by the time it came all the way around, it was a totally different uh, story called a Chinese whisper. Yeah, so that's actual facts. Uh, so read on. This is sometimes intentional as the sharer wants to make the story more interesting or defame the person to a greater extent. Other times, lies can be spread accidentally, much like the childhood game of telephone. As the news goes from one person to another, things are lost in translation or misinterpreted. Regardless of whether the lies are spread on purpose, by choosing to speak about a person who isn't present, you put yourself in a bad position. So just think about that, because it says, as the news goes from one person to another, things are lost in translation or misinterpreted. I know we're we talking about gossiping, but if you got children and you tell your children to do something because they hear what they want to hear, they have a totally different interpretation. So then when you, when you go and correct them on like, I didn't tell you to do this. I told you to do that. No, you said this. And it's like, no, nah, I ain't say that. It's like, nah, I got to get a recorder. But that's what that, that's what that is. When, when things get told like that, a lot of times Israel hear what we want to hear. And, and, and it, the, the stuff get twisted because we heard what we want to hear because we may, Israel may have had a, already had a, a preconceived notion about you. So now they hear something about you. So it confirms so-called they preconceived notion. And now they done twisted it some more. And now I go to the next person and twist it. And then they get to the next person and twist it some more. And that's what happens. It, it causes strife and division. Read on. There's simply no way for the person in question to share their truth or clear up any confusion when they aren't present. And that's why the scriptures say, rehearse not unto another that what you heard. Read. Verse 3. I mean, number <laughs> 3. Tarnish reputation. One way to ruin a person's reputation quickly is through gossip. We see this all the time when it comes to teenage girls. It only takes one person to start a rumor of an indiscretion to set off a chain reaction. Before long, she is known for something that she may or may not have participated in. It can take years to repair a tarnished reputation. And in most cases, the damage is already done. According to the very well family, the person who suffered from another person's gossip is more likely to suffer from lower self-esteem, increased insecurity, depression, and suicidal thoughts. In other words, gossip places unnecessary shame on a person that may be innocent. Remember, there are always three sides to every story. Yours, theirs, and the truth. Be sure to think carefully before you participate in a conversation about someone else without them present. There is a high chance it will change your image of them without giving them an opportunity to defend themselves. So real quick. So with that, with that, with that just brought out as a heavy point. Go to um, Sirach chapter 21 and verse 22. The book of Sirach chapter 21, verse 22. A foolish man's foot is soon in his neighbor's house, but a man of experience is ashamed of him. So it says a foolish man's foot is soon in his neighbor's house, but a man of experience is ashamed of him. And we're going we're gonna to read on to get the full understanding. We're going to read it all the way through. 
But it says a foolish, just remember that. It says a foolish man's foot is soon in his neighbor's house. Read. Verse 23. A fool will peep in at the door into the house. That's what, that's what they get the term, a peeping Tom. A peeping Tom, peeping through the window, spying on you, seeing, what you, seeing what's going on in your house. Read. But he that is well nurtured will stand without. But he that is well nurtured will stand without, meaning he's going to mind his own business. He's going to stand he's going to stand outside the doors of your house until you invite him in. He's not going to be sneaking in and ear, eavesdropping trying to hear what you hear what's going on, trying to pry and find out what's going on in your house. Read verse 24. It is the rudeness of a man to hearken at the door. It's but so hard when you look up the definition of hearken, it says to listen attentively. Meaning you you hell bent on find out what's going on, finding out what's going on in somebody else's house so that you can go and tell it. Read on. But a wise man will be grieved with the disgrace. A wise man gonna be grieved at the disgrace, meaning that a wise man is gonna stay in his place. He's gonna mind his business. He's gonna stay in his lane. Read. Verse 25. <clears throat> the lips of talkers will be telling such things as pertain a not unto them. So this is this is now 25. We just read 22 to 24. 25 through 28 is going to give the sense, the clear sense of what 22 and 20, 22 to 24 was saying. Read. It said, the lips of talking will be telling such things as pertain if not unto them. That's a talebearer, a gossip. You be you gonna be telling, talking about, always talking about somebody else's life. And never addressing your own issues. You always got something to say about somebody else's life. You always telling somebody else's business. What's going on with this brother or that brother? Or this brother in his household and this sister in their house. That's, that's all you talk about. Read. But the words of such as have understanding are weighed in the balance. Meaning they speak with discretion. They, don't, they speak. They know when and where to speak about something. Read. Verse 26, the heart of fools is in their mouth. The heart of fools is in their mouth. Why? Because everything that they, everything that they think, they're telling. So if they hear your business, they think it, they're going to tell somebody. That's the heart of a fool is in his mouth. He can't hold his tongue. Read. But the mouth of the wise is in their heart. But the mouth of the wise is in their heart, meaning a, a wise man is going to think and consider. Is it beneficial for me to tell? It came to my mind. They made me, They said something that made me think about this brother's with what this brother going through is now a good time to say it nah this this brother he can't provide a solution he's not a he the person that the person business who it is ain't present so nah i'm not gonna say nothing i'm gonna, I'm gonna keep my mouth shut that's what that's what it's saying with a, 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 the mouth of the wise is in their heart remember the heart is your mind so a wise man is gonna think about think before he speak he's gonna think about what he say before he speak like nah it's not expedient for me to Say that. It's not going to be beneficial. Read. Verse 27. But the ungodly curse of Satan, he curses Read his again. own. But when the, when the ungodly curse. Hey, man, that's that 1611, man. <laughs> I think verse, the last time you was reading, you was putting words in there. <laughs> verse, <laughs> verse 27. Glasses work. When the, when the ungodly curse of Satan. He curseth his own soul. It says, when the ungodly curseth Satan, he curses his own soul. Meaning, you the devil, but you you putting on the front like you ain't, like you righteous. So you cursing Satan or you cursing yourself. Read. Verse 28. A whisper defileth his own soul and is hated wheresoever he dwelleth. And we just read that in that article. Wherever you, if you a whisperer, you you known for telling everybody business or being a gossip, being in people DM, just whispering and gossiping. Ain't nobody. You come in a room and everybody moves to the right because don't nobody want to be around you because they know if you if you hear something, if they tell you something, you can't hold water. You can go and tell somebody else. Some nobody want to be around a person like that. Pull that article back up because we ain't finished it, right? Nope. You got something. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, really quick, because what you're bringing out is very, very heavy. Uh, I, I want to go back to a scripture that you had brought out, uh, Sirach 19 and 6. I want to bring something out, because what's crazy is that stuff like this, we actually go through things. There was a situation 
Read verse 6 first. I want to read this first. The book of Sirach, chapter 19 and verse 6. He that can rule his tongue shall live without strife. So the scripture says that he that can rule their tongue shall live without strife. What does the Bible say about he that can rule their tongue or he that can't rule it, right? Watch, give me James 3 and 3. Let me show you something. The book of James, chapter 3 and verse 3. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth. A bit is going into that, br that bridle, that brittle, that little muffle that they put on the horse's mouth to control their head so they can take uh, tell the horse where they want to go, right? Read on. That they may obey us. Uh-huh. And we turn about their whole body. So, read on. Behold, also the ships, which though they be so great. Read verse 2. Verse 2. For in many things... We offend all. Uh huh. If any man offend not in word, uh -huh. the same is a perfect man. Uh huh. Able also to brighter the whole body. You see that? So if you're able to rule over your tongue, you're also able to rule over your body. The reason why I bring this up is because there was actually a situation where something like this actually happened where a person wasn't able to rule their tongue. And when whoever was offended came to talk, talk to them, the person came outside to approach them, and they seen them there was on the phone, and then walked back in the house, and the person tried to call them back so they can deal with it, and she ignored, the person ignored their phone calls eight times. So now you begin gendering strife. So now the person's coming to talk to you to try to see if they can make something right, and you just left and now started avoiding their phone calls. What you think is going on in their mind? Like, what the heck? This person going out telling all of my business, I come to you to try to make it right, and now you're avoiding my phone calls? What? That's how you start to begin to gender strife, all because you couldn't rule your body because you thought that you was cold. It was too cold outside. You could have brought a cold up, whatever the case may be. So go back to Sirach 19 and 6. The book of Sirach, chapter 19 and verse 6. Uh-huh. He that ruleth his tongue shall live without strife. Uh -huh. And he that hateth babbling shall have less evil. Verse 7. Verse 7. Rehearse not unto another that which is told unto thee. So if you don't uh, partake in gossiping or talebearing, watch this. Read. And thou shalt fare never the worse. You will never fear what that person who you're gossiping about will do to you. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have to fear that. So now you're going around, hey, I, I, I want to bring this up, but if I bring it up, I'm scared because, you know, the person got to conceal and carry. So I don't know if I want to bring it up or not. So your conscience is bearing witness against you because you know what you're doing is wrong. That's why you know what you're doing is wrong. You shouldn't have been doing that in the first place. That's it. So you, if you'd have never did it, you'd have never had to fear it, never the worse. That's it. So pull up that article. Number four, breaks confidentiality. A key element of friendship, a free, a key element of friendship is confidentiality. When one friend shares with another, they do so in expectation that the friend is a safe place. Close friends may disclose details about their intimate lives, children, secret insecurities, past mistakes, and expect that no one will ever find out. Yet, gossip breaks this code of silence. In some ways, sharing one's secret is like saying, my desire to speak about you is more important than my desire to honor you. So real quick, uh, while we're reading this, get, uh, you know, read, read on. I'm going to get the scripture first. Rushing to share someone's intimate details is not only selfish, but a way to seek attention for yourself to make the other person look bad. At the end of the day, we must remember, if other people are unaware of your friend's business, there is probably a reason why. Go up. Although these situations are few and far between, there are some instances that confidentiality must be broken. For instance, if you learn that your friend's child is being sexually abused in the home 
or your friend is actively trying to commit suicide. In those cases, it is best to seek counsel without disclosing who the person is and move forward with contacting the authorities best suited to handle the situation. When it comes to child safety, you are a teacher, coach, mental health professional, hospital worker, and a clergy member, depending on the state. So real quick, because the, the, in that last paragraph, um, get Proverbs chapter 27 and 23. Because, and I, I've mentioned it, but it's certain things that you hear, and it may be a case of, you know what, this person needs some help. So let me go. It's, it's, like I said, it's a proper, I said it earlier, it's a proper channel that you go through. If it's a situation that you hear, and you know that that person needs some counsel, that person may need some help. It's a certain, it's, it's, it's a channel that you're supposed to go through. If you, if you do have, if it's a case where you have to tell somebody, and it wouldn't be considered gossip. Read that. Yeah, 27 and 23. The book of Proverbs, chapter 27, verse 23. Be thou diligent to know the state of the flock and look well to thy herds. So the reason that I read this is because this is a, a message to the leaders. To be diligent to know the estate of the flock. So there are certain, you know, like with the with the men, there's certain, there's certain thing pro there's those certain things that are set up where there's a channel of communication to where if there's an issue. The leadership supposed to know. The leadership supposed to know about things that's going on, so that that way we can provide the solutions. If it's a case of okay, let's let's bring them in so we can sit them out and counsel with them, get them some solutions so that they can better their situation, or it may be a case of hey, we hear certain things and now okay, we got to do it. We got to put together a class to address this because this person might not be the only person dealing with this. So we got to address it because it may be something we may hear things and we may hear it. Uh, consecutively, where it's, it's different people, but it's the same issue. So it's like, you know what, let's do a class to deal with the spirit so that we can strengthen the congregation so that you can build your spirit up so that you can fight off those things, give you the scriptures on that on that particular topic or that particular thing. So then now you you hear it. And like the scripture said um, in Hebrews 4 and 12, the scriptures is a, is a two-edged sword. We can deal with the matter with the scriptures. So it may be a case where you get cut in the spirit and you're like dang that this class for me and you're able to correct your actions you're able to correct your behavior so there's certain things so it's certain things that you want the leadership to know because we we can we can provide the solution we can you want to open your mouth and speak with like i said that's why it's, you got to speak with the proper people so that you can get the actual uh solution to your problem from there get james because it's a it's a proper now, I feel like I'm repeating myself, I'm being redundant. But you, you, it's a proper line of communication to where you want to, if you got things going on, you want to go through the proper channels so that your, don't be, for one, your business don't end out amongst everybody where even if a class is done, a class is done, it's done generally. So it's not, your name is not going to be called or nothing like that. But if you're going around and telling somebody that ain't got no business doing your business, you mess around and everybody know about know about what's going on with you, and you have you still ain't got no solution. You still suffering. Read that. James chapter five. Start at thirteen. The book of James, chapter five, verse thirteen. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Uh-huh. Is any am sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. So if you if you got a sickness, you got things going on, you gotta let the, you gotta let us know. If we don't know, how we gonna how we gonna how we gonna anoint you? How we gonna pray for you if we don't know what you we don't, we don't know what's going on with you? You don't say nothing, you don't open your mouth because you're scared and fearful that somebody's gonna judge you. You you got you got the mindset that Oh, if I tell them this, they're going to look at me sideways because my past was dark, so I got this wrong with me, and I don't want to tell nobody. We can't help you because you're not, you're not opening up and telling us about what's going on. So we can provide the tools that you need to help you, send up the prayers for you so that the Most High show mercy on you. Read. Verse 15. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. It may be that the Most High will heal you. The may, Most High will make a way for you to get healing that you may be had you have, may have a certain ailment or whatever, 
And because you're not asking for praise, you're not saying nothing, the most high afflicts, keeping that affliction on you, but then you go and get prayers, you get go, go open up and get that prayer, get anointed. The most high may very well heal you, but because you don't say nothing, that's why, that's why the scriptures are here to guide us. We coming in, we repenting, yeah, we, we all been scorned in the world somehow or some way, but as we in our repentance, we got to break them walls down. We got to stop. We, we, we can't we can't continue to live where we so secretive and everything is a secret. We ain't tell nobody. We can't grow as a nation. We can't build as a nation. That's why the scriptures say, gather yourselves together, O nation not desired. You got a job, you going to work, you, you out here in this world, we are not desired. Yeah, we repenting, but we still go in the store and still get looked at sideways by Esau. By Esau. If you go into certain stores, you live in a certain neighborhood, they still look at you sideways. If you look at living in the neighborhood with Esau, they still look at you sideways, and you see it and you know it. We are not desired. So when we come amongst each other, we got to, like I said, I ain't saying be simple and just tell your business to everybody, but you, you have to go through the proper channels. That's what, you, that's what we all are coming here for. We come in here to get our minds right. We come in here to get the healing of the scriptures. But if we, we, if we uh, roll in that spirit where we just in a shell to ourselves, don't want to tell nobody, you never going you never gonna grow it's cool it's it's one thing you first come in one month one month two you kind of observing you're supposed to do that you're supposed to observe prove watch see what's going on but once you get to a certain point you gotta you gotta you gotta you gotta connect with somebody that is that has been here before you and you see that they are fruitful they have fruits preferably leadership and you you able to to, to build that bond of getting counsel, explaining what's going on with you so that you can get the healing. Read on. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Uh-huh. Confess your faults one to another and pray for another that ye may be healed. So it says confess your faults one to another. That's not talking about you coming in here and just confessing your faults to the next brother, the brother that's sitting next to you that came in the same time you came in, right. or the brother that came in after you. Confessing your faults one to another is going to the leaders. Going to the leaders, because that's the same thing. That's how gossip, you, you feeding gossip to the gossiper because you being simple. Right. You don't want to do that. You want to go through the proper channels. Read. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So that's it with that. Uh, what was we? Go back to that article. Although these situations are few and far between, there are some instances that confidentiality must be broken. For instance, if you learn that your friend's child is being sexually abused in the home or your friend is actively trying to commit suicide, in those cases, it's best to seek counsel without disclosing who the person is and move forward with contacting the authorities best suited to handle the situation. When it comes to child safety, you are a teacher, coach, mental health professional, hospital worker, and a clergy member. Depending on the state, you are a mandated reporter and are required to share the information. It may prove necessary in the moment to directly tell your friend, thanks for sharing that, but I have to share with someone else to get help. So that's, and that's something, that's, 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 um, commendable to do something like that somebody tell you something and it sound alarming hey you know what i recommend you go to leadership but if you're not gonna go to leadership i go and tell leadership so that you can get some help because you need you need some help and that, that's nothing wrong with that because the person is trying to get a solution to your problem and if you if you're a person that have an issue going on and then a person tell you hey I'm gonna go. I'm gonna let leadership know so that you can get some help and you nah i don't want leadership that's you out the spirit but you not you what did you what you here for you're not trying to get you're not trying to get better. So if somebody say do that, that's not gossip. They trying to get they trying to get you a solution to your problem so that you can get better so you can overcome that problem. Um was that the end of the article was another was it more points? Number 5, ruins relationships. One way to sever a relationship is to share or participate in gossip. 
Once the trust is lost and the confidentiality is broken, it can be difficult to move forward. According to the psychology today, gossip leads to clicks, backstabbing, bullying, secret alliances, and making others feel attacked. Unfortunately, no relationship is exempt from the harmful effects. And this, and I, and we talking about gossip. This is another thing that just, just, just hit my man. Just as we reading through this, clicks, backstabbing, bullying, secret alliances, making others feel attacked. And this is random. I don't even, it's not even really on the same topic. But if you are that presumptuous, evil surmising brother or sister, where you may not necessarily come around a lot or you may not necessarily be connected with brothers and sisters and you always got something in your mind where this brother is looking at me a, a certain way or this sister looked at me like this and she don't like me oh this brother don't like me he looked at me he looked at me sideways he looked at me and smirked that's an evil spirit if you ain't if you ain't talk to that brother or talk to that sister and they they uh verbalize that they got an issue against you you're evil surmising. You're being presumptuous. You are, you're, make, you're, making, you're making up a story in your mind that somebody don't like you based off falsehoods, based off what's going in your mind. Go to uh, J uh, Jeremiah, is it 2 and 33 or is it 17 and 9? 17 and 9. Jeremiah 17 and 9. We all, all got to be mindful uh, of, of our thoughts. Because your, your, your thoughts and feelings ain't always right. A lot of times they wrong. You and your feelings and your emotions, they not right. 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 Your, 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 your thoughts and your thoughts and the things that come to your mind, if it don't line up with the scriptures, you off. It's off. It don't make sense. Read. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 17 and verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? it? Says the heart is deceitful above all things. Our mind. There's another scripture in Sirach that says a man's mind is sometimes want to tell him seven things, like a watchman in a tower or something like that. So your mind, our minds, to take us on cloud nine somewhere, and reality ain't nowhere near our mind. We we them created a, a scenario in our head. And you, you I mean, in situations, you got brothers and sisters inboxing, inboxing brothers and sisters talking about, yeah, you hate me. You, you check your spirit. According to what? Well, you looked at me a certain way. Why did you, did you say something to me? Did you pull me to the side? Did you, did you ask me, was everything all right before you came and attacked me? That's a, that's an off spirit. We can't be like that. We can't create scenarios in our mind with, with no facts. And no, no, no proof, but you're accusing somebody of hating you. You're accusing somebody of looking at you a certain way. When you don't even, you don't know a brother, you, you, you don't have a relationship with a brother or sister, so you don't know their mannerisms, you don't know they, um, they continence, you don't know how they move, and then you would take a look, and they will look at you, and you'd be like, man, this, bro, they, they hate me. Why they look at me like that? Why are you looking at everybody like that? What you mean? And these are situations that has happened over the years. I remember it was a it was a situation where a brother came to me and was like, "Hey, such a such, officer, such and such, hey man, he he hate me, man. He got a hatred toward me." I'm like, "Man, you talk to him? No, nah, man. I just know he hate me. The way he looked at me. Like, what you mean? What look? He just got he just looked at me. I'm like, he look at everybody like that. That's 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 his look. That's how he is. What you talking about? Did you hear? Yeah, that's his face. What you talking about? Did you talk to him? No, nah, man. I don't need to talk to him. I know. Like you, you don't have no proof though. Go and talk to him, and then come back and re no, nah, I ain't talking to him. Did you talk to him? No. Nah. Yeah, I talked to him, and he said it wasn't nothing, but it gotta be something. No, you your spirit off. You ain't formulated something in your mind, and you let your heart deceive you, and now. Um, get that in Sirach. Is it three and twenty-one? If uh, vain judge, uh, um, yeah, because of your vain opinion, you you create a scenario in your mind that something is true, and you don't even have facts for it. Uh, it should be is it three and twenty-one? Or is it four and twenty-one? Three yep. and twenty-four. Yep, the Book of Sirach, chapter three and verse twenty-four. For many are deceived by their own vain opinion. 
many are deceived by their own vain opinion, meaning you have formulated a thought in your mind, whether whether it's just something you formulated in your mind or, hell, that could be the, a result of gossip. You done formulated a, a story in your mind about somebody and you don't even know them because of something you may have heard, something you may have seen from somebody else, and now you're looking at a brother and sister with a vain opinion in your mind and you don't even know them. So you created a scenario. Now you got a block, a wall block up against somebody, and you don't even know them. They could probably be the, 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 the uh, had a greatest spirit in the room, but you got a wall up on them because you didn't created some evil in your mind, and now you're acting on that evil. That's strife. That's division. That's that's uh, that's not conducive to us building a nation. Uh, Reed, was that it? Nope. And it. And an evil suspicion hath overthrown the judgment. Now you have an evil suspicion. That's another word for evil surmising, being presumptuous. And it has overthrown your judgment. Now, and the, the, the example I used, brother, ain't even here no more. And haven't been. And it, it was a, with a particular brother, it was an ongoing situation. Every time, it was always, we, we, we out on the streets teaching. Brother, walk up. Hey man, it's a spirit of hatred over here. What you talking about? What happened? Man, it's just a spirit of hatred. Okay, what's the, what's the problem? It's just a spirit of hatred. You you have came, you have created something in your mind with no proof. That's an evil spirit. That's something that Israel got bad. You create a scenario. No, I, how you know? How you know this person hates you? No, I just know the way they always walk past me. They'll never shalom me. Like how you know they wasn't busy, man? Every, every time, did you talk to them? No, nah, cause I know, I know, I know they hate me. What? Like, are you serious? These things, it, 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 just like when the bishop, said, these things actually happen. It sounds like it's uh, far fetched, but these things actually happen. So we had, we always got to be mindful of those. Things. We can't be creating scenarios in your mind and then you run with it and you ain't even talk to the brother or sister. We cannot roll in that spirit. Um, go back to that article. Ruin relationships. One way to sever a relationship is to share or participate in gossip. Once the trust is lost and the confidentiality is broken, it can be difficult to move forward. According to the psychology today, gossip leads to clicks, backstabbing, bullying, secret alliances and making others feel attacked unfortunately no relationship is exempt from the harmful effects whether the gossip occurs through work friends amongst the church siblings or best friends being talked about when you aren't present causes much pain uh yeah read that blogger jessica gavin suggests that the following steps, if you find yourself in the middle of a damaged relationship caused by gossiping. First, come clean with yourself about the poor choice to participate. Accept that gossip is damaging. Repent of your participation. Cling to the Lord for help. So turn to the Bible. Turn to the solution. Go to the leadership. Get, get the counsel that you need. And then, like I said, the first step is you admitting that it's an issue, that it's a problem with you. Read. Ultimately, gossip is a character issue. It takes much maturity to walk away from juicy gossip. This can become even harder if you aren't a fan of the person being talked about. Yet, God requires us to do so. He knows that gossip moves fast and can be a virus to your community. Our causing, focus causing division. That virus is division, strife. Go ahead. Our focus should be on our own situations and building up others. Read that part again. Our focus should be on our own situations and building up others. We must not allow our tongues to be guilty of harming another or sit quietly as another does so. With the Lord's help, we can avoid this temptation. So go to uh, Matthew chapter 7 and verse 3, because that part it says, uh, our focus should be on our own situations 
and building up others. This is what we have to think about when it comes to this. Our focus should be on our own self, our own, our own self and building up others. This is what we got to do. Matthew chapter 7 and 3. The book of Matthew chapter 7 and verse 3. And why? Actually start at verse 1. Verse 1. Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. Basically saying, judge with righteous judgment. You can't make judgments unrighteously. You can't, you can't make decisions. You can't formulate something in your mind and be like, that's, that's it. That, that, this is it. That's exactly what it is. It's judge not that you be not judged. Because if you, if you walking around and you got this block, uh, this wall up to somebody off a of false, false perception, you didn't, you didn't judge somebody and be, judge somebody as wicked or whatever the case may be. You're going to be judged because now you, you done created strife off your own evil thoughts and evil emotion. Read. And why beholdest, beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considereth not the beam that is in thine own eye? That's what you, you, you're focusing on everybody else's business. That's what you, you a gossip. You're telling everybody business. But you're not even realizing that you got the, damn, that you got the devil on you. Read verse four or how would thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the moat out of thy eye and behold, a beam is in thy own eye. Uh huh. Thou hypocrite first cast out the beam of thy own eye and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the moat of thy brother's eye. So you got to get yourself right before you can even help somebody else. Because if you ain't right. Your, your vision is going to be blurry and cloudy to be able to help somebody else. So that's, that's what the, that, that article just uh, mentioned. So moving along, pull up the definition of murmuring. Because that was, that was the end of that article, right? Yeah, pull up, uh, pull up the definition of murmur. Murmuring is another thing we got to be mindful of. Murmuring because you don't like a decision that was made. Murmuring because you may feel like you may feel like you being picked on. You feel like a, a a decision that was made wasn't right. So now you're going and speaking amongst other people about something that you disgruntled about. Read that. Murmur, a complaint have suppressed. Or uttered in a low, muttering voice. To grumble, to complain, to utter complaints in a low, half-articulate voice. To utter sullen discontent with at before the thing which is in the cause of this discontent. Because you, you, something happened and you don't like it. It caused you to feel a certain way. Something happened to get you in your feelings. That's basically what it's saying. You grumble and complain about it. And you it say to other complaints in a low, half articulated voice, meaning you complain in a way where you're not uh, complaining to get a solution. You're not going to the same thing. You're not going through the proper channels to get a solution. You're just complaining and being disgruntled. Uh, read, pull it back up. Discontent with at before the thing which is the cause of discontent as murmur, not at sickness or with at or against before the active agent which produces the evil. So pull up. I thought I, I thought I posted it. But pull up the definition of sullen. Sullen and discontent. Just so we can get a full, clear understanding because it says murmur is to complain in a sullen, discontented uh, manner. It says, yeah, to utter sullen discontent. Pull up that and sullen and discontent. So we can get a clear understanding. Up. 
Sully. Uh, go go to pull up. Um, uh, go to Webster's. Just scroll down. It should be in the search results. Sully, gloomily or resentful, resentfully silent or repressed, suggesting a sullen state, lowering. So it says gloomily or resentfully silent or repressed. The gloomily, you full of gloom. You got that doom and gloom look, your head down, you complaining, you murmuring to the next brother or sister. And if that brother or sister don't correct you, they got the same spirit. Read. Dull or somber in sound or color. You down in your emotions and you're out the spirit. Dismal, gloomy, moving, moving sluggishly. Because when you when you when you discontented, pull up that discontent. When you had that sullen, you you down low. You something happened that you didn't like. So now your 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 continents all down, and you walking with a sad face. You, you you just you dis, discontented. Read read that. Discontent, lack of contentment, dissatisfaction with one's circumstances, and that caused you to murmur because you don't like something. You don't like the way something's going. You don't. It ain't going how you want it. You think it should go because you can do it better. So this is you get you get into that sullen discontented and now you 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 down and sad so now you murmuring to the next brother or sister and like i said if that's brother or sister don't correct you like hey you gotta check that say something to you to get you get you snap you into it they don't they hate you you hate them and they hate you because they're not correcting you because we're not supposed to that's not that's not the, that's not the spirit we're supposed to roll in we they say we we're supposed to be content paul said he learned to be content and whatever state that he was in, whatever was going on, and we know you look through the history, Paul went through a whole lot, yep. but he learned through all of that, he learned to be content. That's how that's how we have to be when things don't go the way that we think they should go. We got to check that if we if we get in that 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 slump, so to say, you got to check yourself real quick and just keep it pushing. Mm -hmm. You got to keep it pushing because if you get allow yourself to get in that spirit. It's going to be hard for you to come out that slump. Go to uh, Numbers chapter 14 and verse 27. Numbers chapter 14 and verse 27. We're almost done. The book of Numbers chapter 14, verse 27. How long shall I bear with thee, with this evil congregation, which murmur against me? I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, which they murmur against me. Say unto them, as truly as I live, saith the Lord, as, as ye have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. Your, caucus, your caucuses shall fall in this wilderness, and all that were numbered of you according to your whole number from twenty years old and upward, which have murmured against me. So this is the the most high was ready to judge Israel for murmuring because of them going through the wilderness. They wanted to go back to Egypt. The uh this is right before we read up in the chapter. Uh let's read verse one. The book of Numbers, chapter 14, verse 1. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses. And against Aaron. So and notice, notice in, in verse 1, it said they murmured against Moses and against Aaron. Remember, Mo, the Most High God sent Moses and Aaron. So you you got that murmuring spirit. You want to murmur and complain about leadership and things like that. You're not murmuring against us. You're not murmuring against the leadership. You're murmuring against God. Read. And the whole congregation said unto them, would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or with God, we had died in this wilderness. Uh huh. And wherefore have the Lord brought us unto this land to fall by the sword 
that our wives and our children should be a prey? Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? So this is that spirit where we, we trust in oppression. The most, high, the, the, the most high delivered them out of hard bondage, out of slavery, and now they going to, they, they own their en route and on their way to the promised land, and they get they complaining, bickering and complaining. Walk for 40 years, shoes didn't, didn't, didn't disintegrate and fall apart, but they complained. They wanted to go back into slavery because it seemed good. Seemed like it was a better situation. That's the spirit a lot of Israel have. Oh, I was doing better before I came into the truth. I was doing better when I was in Christianity paying tithes. Giving the pastor all my money. and He was driving a Bentley. I was on a bus. But I was good. No, you come to serve the Lord, prepare your soul for temptation. Because what we got, what we got that's the the like the scriptures say, the glory that we got ahead of us is far greater than the things that we can get in this life. So we have to, we have to get keep that wrapped in, my, in our mind. You if you are if you murmuring and you complaining, you find yourself complaining about everything, complaining about this, complaining about that, you got something to say about everything, you're not content. Your spirit ain't right. You think you're entitled to something. And we all got to remember that. The scriptures say our righteousness is as filthy rags. We know, yeah, we're supposed to keep the commandments, but we can never get to a point where we get big-headed and think that we're entitled to something because we don't deserve to be here. We've, we've done wickedly. We've done wickedness. So we don't deserve to be here, so therefore we have to be content with the things that we have. Um, read on. Verse 3. And wherefore have the Lord brought us into this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey? Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? And, and they said to another, Let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. And so they, they, they complained. They complain and complain and complain. Jump up to, they complained and then jump to 10. Verse 10. But all the congregation bade stone them with stones. And the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation. So so they, they, they did what they did. Joshua and Caleb. Joshua. Yeah, Joshua and Caleb. When it searched out a land, they explained to him it's a land flow with milk and honey, all of that. And they said, right after that, they said they gonna but they gonna stone them with stones. Like, no, nah, no, nah, nigga, take me back to Egypt. I don't want to go into that land. Take me back to Egypt so I can be in slavery. That's the foolishness that we deal with with our people. And we we trying to let them know what the truth is. They want to stick to Christianity. They want to stick to Islam. They want to stick to the. They want to stick to the ways of the world. Read on. And the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, how long will this people provoke me? He said, what? How long will this people provoke me? But in verse one, it said the congregation, verse two, it said, and all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron. Let us know when you, when you murmur, you got that murmuring and complaining spirit, you ain't complaining, you ain't murmuring against us. You ain't murmuring against the leadership. You're murmuring against God. You in a fight with God. And I ain't gonna say the I ain't gonna say the saying, but you in a fight with God, you ain't winning that fight. You just leave it like that. Uh what what we had 14, right? Read that. Yeah, read that. Finish that verse out. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me? And how long will it be? Yeah, they believe me. For all the signs which I have showed among them, Indeed. I will smite them with the pestilence and disherited them and will make all of their, all of thee a greater nation and read mightier. That, read than that again. You add words. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sir. I will smite them with the pestilence and disinherit them and will make of thee a greater nation. And mightier than they. So you got to understand, you walking around with that murmuring spirit, you ain't getting the kingdom of God. The most you're going to get cut off. 
you're not gonna get the kingdom with the murmuring spirit. Go to um Philippians chapter two and verse twelve. Philippians chapter two and verse twelve. Actually, you know what? Before we get that, pull up that what 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 what, what I'm at with time. Go to uh go to study. Uh pull up that article on study. Where it says study complaining is bad for you. Um I think I thought I had a starting point with it. Complaining is bad for your health. Started one. Oh, you can't do that? Nah, nah, it's uh, another article. Okay. Complaining is bad for your health. Number one, it makes you more likely to think negatively. The more you complain, the more likely you are to think negative thoughts later on. Neuroscientists commonly use the phrase, synapses that fire wire together to explain this concept. Every time you complain, your brain physically rewires itself to make it easier and more likely for that reaction, aka the type of thought to occur again. Negative thinking ends up breeding more negative thinking. So the, uh, go to Proverbs 23 and 7. So you, if you, if you are murmuring and complaining, that means you just always, you just, you just got a negative, you just got a negative outlook on everything. You look at everything as the cup half full, no, half empty, right? Right. The, half empty. You look at everything on the downside. So that means you're because you th always looking at things negatively. Your mind, like I said, your mind is rewired to every time something happens, you think the worst. You think the negative. You think somebody say something to you, oh, you hate me. I can't believe you hate me. You said that you hate me. You corrected me. You hate me. Everything is negative. Read that, Proverbs the, 23 and 7. The book of Proverbs, chapter 23, verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. So it says, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. If your mind is... If you always, everything, you you have a negative downplay to it, you got a negative thought process. You have to correct that. You got to repent of that. If you got to complain in spirit, everything, it's always something that you complaining about. You murmuring, you don't like this, you don't like that. You got a negative spirit on you. And what you're going to do, you're going to draw people away from you. Nobody's going to be around you because every time they come around you, you bring their spirit, you suck the life out of them. So it'll come to a point, and we had cases of that. But sisters suck the life out of sisters, and like I don't, you know, I ain't going, I ain't, I don't want to be around her, because you all, everything is negative. Everything is all that you, you doing this against me, you doing that against me, you doing this, you doing that. Oh, you did this, and it was on purpose. That's a negative spirit. You murmuring, complaining about everything. Pull that article back up. <clears throat> Number two, it can damage your memory. MRN scans show that constant complaining can lead to shrinking of the hippocampus, the region in your brain responsible for cognitive functioning. A smaller hippocampus leads to a decline in memory and the ability to adapt to new situations among other functions. This can occur from even just a few days of stressing out and lead to long-term damage. So you you always got that complaining and negative thinking, that, that negative spirit. You 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 uh you killing yourself. You killing yourself slowly because that takes a toll on your body. And it, it, whatever a hippocampus is and uh uh the cognitive function, I heard it before, I, I can't say right offhand what it is. But it it damages you. You got that spirit where everything is negative. You always looking at the the uh, the shorty end of the stick. We can't roll in that spirit. Uh, pull the article back up. Go ahead. I got a question. 
Um, so you saying right here in verse, if you read from verse six and seven, because that's heavy what you brought out. Uh, do I mean, I mean Proverbs twenty three and six. It says, I read it. It says, "Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye." So a person that that looks evil to you, they presumptuous in their mind, right? It says, "Neither desire thou his dainty meats, for as he thinketh in his heart." So even though he still got that evil eye towards you, he's presumptuous. He's got all of these things that he concocted in his mind against. Oh, I, I think he hate me, or this person got some against me, or this person always picking on you. It says, "For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he." Eat. And drink, saith he to thee. He's going to come to the school. He's going to eat around you. He's going to drink around you. He might even break bread. You might go to his house. He might chill with you every once in a while. But it says, it says, eat and drink, saith he to thee. But his heart is not with thee. In spirit, he really ain't with you. In spirit, he really, I don't even want to be around here. I want to leave. I don't think this is a spot for me. That's what the scriptures are saying. Damn. Yeah, that's a heavy, heavy point. Bring that uh, article back up. All right. Uh, number three, it increases your level of cortisol, the stress hormone. When you complain, you increase your levels of cortisol, also known as the stress hormone. Chronically high levels of cortisol can lead to a variety of health problems including increased risk of depression, digestive problems, sleep issues, higher blood pressure, and even increased risk of heart disease. Read on. Number four, it can shorten your lifespan. Constant complaining is not only bad in the moment, but it can be detrimental in the long run. One study published in the Archives of General Psychiatry found that optimists live longer and pessimists with a 55% lower risk of death from all causes and a 23% lower risk of dying from heart failure. So an optimist is basically somebody that has a more of a positive outlook. They always looking at things to see the to bet to see the that's charity. That's that's a spirit of charity. You are you always you always, when you see your brother or your sister, even if it appear to be something evil, you don't know the brother or sister. You, you know, maybe that was a slip of the tongue. Maybe that was, you know, them speaking in ignorance. You have a thought, your thought process is not always evil. You look at things better. Not saying that you be gullible and just let somebody run over you, roll over you like a roller coaster or something. But you, you, you have a positive outlook where you're not, you, you don't turn everything into something evil. You give a person, you give per, a person the benefit of the doubt. Now, of course, if something become a pattern, a, per, a pattern of somebody actually doing something to you and it's evil, it's a pattern. Nine times out of ten, something ain't right. You go and talk to them. You let you you go and talk to them. You don't complain about it and murmur. You go and talk to them and resolve the issue. If it's to, to find out if it's an issue and resolve it. So what you're saying, officer, is look for the good in that person until they show you they they uh evil side. Exactly. That's the spirit of charity. Because if it ain't no pattern, we, we all slip up and do certain things. We don't say we slip up, do things that's out of the spirit, and we don't even realize it. But it may be a one-time occurrence where it just happened. We slip, we may have, you know, so we may have something on our mind that caused us to do something out of character. But if it's not a pattern, you don't go in, oh, he, he did this one, this one day. Somebody did you something to you one time, and you ran with it like, oh, he evil, and his spirit ain't right. He did this to me, and he ain't even come to apologize. Maybe he didn't realize he he maybe he didn't realize he did it. And if he never did it again, they let you know that it was a it was a it was a a, a slip of the spirit, so to say. Well, something could have been going on with him, and he he just he just slipped up that day, and he didn't even realize it. And he moving on, thinking everything is good, but yet you. Getting bitter because you, you man, can't believe he did. You were dwelling on it. Now you murmuring and complaining, whether you murmuring in the mirror to yourself or you murmuring to somebody that ain't able to correct you and say, hey, go speak to the brother and, and make sure ain't nothing wrong. And make sure ain't nothing wrong. Make sure it ain't no issue. But that, that that's a murmuring complaint. That's a negative spirit. Um, I just started talking. I, I lost much. Uh, Get Philippians chapter 4. 
and 6. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. The book of Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And if all else fails, this, this is the solution. It says, be careful for nothing. Another word for careful is don't be anxious. You, 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 you creating situations. You, you getting fluttered by every little thing that happened. That's being, you, you don't, be, don't be a pessimist where you turn everything into bad. It says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be known. No, send up the prayers. You feel like you, some, hey. Send up prayers. Take the spirit off of me. Take this murmuring, this complaining, this negative spirit up off of me. Uh, uh, refine my ways. You ask God to ask God to give you the wisdom, and best believe when you ask God to give you that wisdom, to give you that strength to overcome it, He gonna put a He gonna put a situation right in your face. It's gonna be a situation that you're gonna have to deal with, and and not move in that negative spirit. That's how the Most High is gonna build your spirit up to be able. To resist that temptation, he's gonna put you in a situation that now, okay, you ask me, you ask me for to uh take that negative spirit up off you, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you gonna, I'm gonna, um, uh, you gonna be at the store, and this is just a light, you gonna be at the store, and I'm gonna make the, uh, I'm gonna cause the, 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 uh, the person at the front of the line to pull out a bag of pennies, and they got a hundred dollars worth of groceries. And now you looking, what you gonna do? That's a you know what I'm saying, look, outrageous example, and it's not pertaining to what I'm at what I'm actually saying, but the most high when you when you when you pray for when you pray for things, the most high is gonna be like, okay, I'm a I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give you what you need to build that the to strengthen that 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 um to strengthen your spirit. He's gonna put you in situations where you have to right. apply and that's to be where, able to get what you need. Right. That's when that's where it says, uh, is it here? Let's request we may know it's good. Keep reading. Verse 7. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So it is ultimately when you pray for something, you gotta like uh in, in Mark. What Christ said, if, uh, when you pray, basically when you pray for something, believe that you receive it. So if you pray for something, I'm going in, I'm going another direction. But when you pray, when you pray for the most how to take a spirit off of you, you got to believe that he gave you, he, 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 he give you the, the, uh, the, the strength of mind to overcome that spirit. Because it's not going to be like a poof, voila, a shazam, and now you just, the mighty and you able to know you're gonna have to go you're gonna have to go through the pains to resist in that that spirit so that you build your spirit up to not fall into that temptation and the can and hence what we was talking about to being an a, optimist or what the article said being an optimist or a pessimist you're gonna be put in situations where now you gotta you gotta rewire your brain and make the right decision and think think positively that's where the uh, romans one Romans 12, 1 and 2 said, be transformed by the renewal of your mind. It ain't no poof of smoke and it's just, oh, you just automate, you just change in the blink of an eye. Not here. When Christ come back, yeah, when we when he actually make those changes. But right now, no, you're going to have to go through the, the pain and the struggles to get that, get your spirit right. You're going to have to go through the fasting, through the praying, through the going through situations so that you get the experience to do the right thing. That's why Paul said we glory in tribulation, for tribulation yeah. worketh a patience and yeah. experience. You get that experience. That's the Lord blessing you with that that situation so you can uh him answering your prayers so you can get that spirit off you. It's allowing you to grow. Right. So pull that article back up. All right. Number five. It makes the people around you negative, too. No one wants to be around unpleasant people. But if you keep complaining, you might find your peers adapting these negative habits as well. So, and that's a problem. And this is why that's the problem. Because that's why it says, that's why we say when you have issues 
if you do have a complaint, go through the proper channel and get help. Because if you go into your peer, your peer can't help you. You go into the brother that came in with you, your peers can't help you. You're going to end up infecting their spirit if their spirit ain't strong enough to let you know, hey, man, don't get to correct you, stop you. Like, hey, don't, don't come, don't come at me with that negative stuff. That, that ain't right. Hey, if you need help, go get some help. You get, you have to be able to, if your peers can't do that, well, you shouldn't go to your peers ultimately. But if your peers can't do that, that your so-called friend ain't your friend because they not stopping you from doing what you, or they, they not, hey, hey man, you gotta watch that spirit. Hey, go, you, you might want to go get some counsel. That's what your that's what your peers should be doing, but in the same breath, you shouldn't be going to your peers spewing negativity and complaints. That's not the spirit we're supposed to roll in. Pull the article back up. No one wants to be around unpleasant people, but if you keep complaining, you might find your peers adapting these negative habits as well. Listening to someone complain makes you more likely to be negative as well which can just perpetuate the desire to release all those unhappy thoughts. As they say, birds of a feather tend to flock together. So if you want more positivity, look for people who keep their sour thoughts to themselves. At the end of the day, sometimes it feels good to get your grievances off your chest. But if you're going to express your negative sentiments, make sure you're doing it in a productive way. That's heavy. A productive way is go to the proper channel and get help. If you feel disgruntled about something, hey, hey, officer, such and such happened, and I don't, I don't really, I ain't really like the decision. I feel like this, so that way that officer can redirect your thought process. Well, maybe, maybe the brother didn't mean it like that. Go and talk to him so that you can clear the air, so that you can see what was the solution. Let's say it was an officer over you that said something and it made you feel a certain type of way. If you not, if you so to say is not comfortable going directly to that that officer or the man right up directly above you, go to one of his peers maybe, and talk to him. Don't go to him in a complaint like, "Man, your bro, he off." No, go to him. Hey, such and such happened. I want to speak to him, but I just want to. <clears throat> I want to know what's the best way to approach it. How should I approach it? That's when the scriptures talk. When the scriptures say, uh, "Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father." If you got somebody that's over you, in the in the mo in the Lord, that's still your elder. Yeah, we not we not the, we not elders like you know what I'm saying. We not elders like the bishop right. and the deacons, but we we are the men that's in here in Chicago or whatever city you may be in. The men that's over you are your elders because they came in before you, and as it, as it relates to order and structure, they over you, and they 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 they, they the uh, stewards that set up over you to be able to get the proper guidance. If they don't know, if we don't know something, we got leaders over us, so we can go and get the solution. Like, hey, you know what? Let me get back to you. I ain't sure about that. It's my first time hearing that. Let me get back to you. I'm gonna go get some counsel. And I'm gonna get back to you. But you have to go through the proper channels. That's what that the, the uh what the article said. Deal with it in a productive way. It's going through the proper channels so that you can get a solution and grow. Go back to that article. All right. And at the end of the day, sometimes it feels good to get your grievances off your chest. But if you're going to express your negative sentiments, make sure you're doing it in a productive way. If something is bothering you, take the proper action to help eliminate or resolve the issue. And if you rely and if you really have to express how you feel, just make sure you limit yourself to an allotted period of time for venting and then move on. Meaning you let it go. You let it go. Go through the proper channels, and then you move on. Because the feeling may come back. The thought may come back. No, nah, he's evil. You got to move on. You got to be able to resist the devil, and he's going to flee from you. Uh, Go to Philippians 2 and 12. I'm going to end it with this. Wait, wait. No, nah, yeah, I'm going to end it with this. I've been going for like almost two hours. The book of Philippians, chapter 2, verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved. 
as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. We all have to keep that in mind. We all have to work out our own salvation. At the end of the day, you know yourself better than anybody else do. You know yourself better than anybody else, and you have to work out your own salvation. You have to examine yourself and fix your own self. You got to fix your spirit. You got to fix those things about you. Read. For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. That's when you have a humble spirit and you go to the most high and pray, and you ask for certain things. It's, it's the most high God that will, that work in you, to will and to do it for his good pleasure, meaning he's going to put some situations in front of you where you're going to have to resist. You're going to have to do what's right to build up your spirit. Because when you're faced with the temptation, whatever your lust may be, you're faced with the, if it's negativity, you, you, if it's what we're talking about, gossiping, murmuring, with the topic of this class, gossiping or murmuring, uh, tail-bearing is gossiping. You deal with that spirit, the most high going to put you in spirit situations where you may hear something. And now, like the scripture said, uh, uh, what did it say? Uh, it won't burst you. Uh, when I heard it's a word, be bold. It said be bold. It will not burst you. So you're going to be put in situations where you may hear something. Somebody may come and tell you something. You ask the most high God to take that spirit from you, and then some, you're going to hear something, and now you're going to be tempted because it's going gonna, it's gonna to be on the tip of your tongue like, I got to tell somebody. It's up to you to resist that and apply the commandments. It's up to you to resist that. That's how you're going to strengthen your spirit. It ain't going to be where you ask the most half of something, and then it's just going to be like poof, and you ain't going to never face that temptation again. No, you're going to have to build it up. You're going to have to fast. You're going to have to pray, and you're going to have to apply. Read on. Verse 14. Do all things without murmurings and disputings. Everything we do, we got to do it without murmuring and disputing. If things don't go your way, you best believe. If if it's unrighteousness involved, if you're being mistreated, if you're being done wrong, the most high is going to judge whoever is, who, the most high going to judge that wrongdoer. You got to trust in the most high. Now, if it's, if, like I said, if it's a Matthew 18 situation, you apply Matthew 18 and you keep it pushing. You keep that peace. It says do all things without murmurings and disputing, meaning you go, you're not re trying to resolve the issue. You're just murmuring, complaining to people that ain't going to be able to give a solution to things of that nature. Read. That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. So we have to remember. We are we've been called into this truth so that we can be we can become blameless. Meaning we when you when it says you're blameless, meaning you're quick to repent. When you when you when when you slip up, you may fall, you may do something, you may sin, you may do something wrong, you quick to repent. You quick to, you know what? I gotta get that right. I gotta fix that spirit. You gotta fix that about me. So now you you improving. That's what makes you blameless because you're constantly improving. You're constantly getting better. You're doing the things necessary that you don't that you're not uh, repetitively doing the same thing over and over and over again. That's not right. Read. Holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. So back back to verse 15. So it says that, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, meaning we're getting ourselves right. So we're not leading a path where we're going to end up in destruction, that ultimate rebuke. And it says in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, we have to remember that our people that's out here on the streets, they looking for a way out. And a lot of times we're going to be the one that encounters certain people and they gonna see, they gonna see the fringes. They gonna ask, "Hey, what's the? Oh, I like, I like them fringes, man. I like that. I like how that look. What's that? We are. That's why I say, whom ye shine as lights in the world. We are that light, and we can't be. We can't, brothers and sisters can't be in here murmuring and having strife and gossiping and all that. So if somebody see you on the street, see your fringes, you tell them about the truth. They come to the school and they like, this is some nigga stuff. I could, this, they do this in the church." 
and then they right back out the door. That can't be. That can't be named amongst us. So I'm going to conclude the class with that. I pray that everybody was edified. I apologize that the class started late and then it was kind of overextended. But I pray that everybody was edified by the class. All Most high in Christ bless. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. 